my name is Tracy Perkins, and welcome to a new edition of Choices. I'm very pleased to announce as tonight's guest, John Curran, who's a life coach. Thank you so much for being here, John. My pleasure. I appreciate the invitation. Now, you have a much longer title, so you should give that to me because I shortened it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Um, I'll do a little bit of everything. I'm an author, um, life purpose coach, teacher, and uh, inspirational speaker. And uh, I work with... Uh, business owners and also uh, individuals to help them uh, connect with their life purpose. So how did you, walk me through it, how did you get into this? Well, I've worked in the medical field for a number of years and I, and I enjoy doing that, um, but I've also found that I've always been interested and studied people who have been really successful. And I was curious about, well, what makes them different than anybody else and what do they do? And I started to delve into it. I got more and more interested. I found out a lot of them had coaches, people like Tiger Woods and all these famous people. And I thought, geez, you know, you know why? I, you know, I, have, I love working with people. I love bringing out the best in people. And I thought, why the heck not go and get certified? And so I, you know, it was a discovery process for me. I had to go out, learn a little bit. I did some research, did the due diligence, looked at different programs, and I found one where I could, you know, uh, get certified. And I ended up becoming uh, certified as a uh, practitioner and as a master coach and as a, in NLP, which is neuro -ling linguistic programming. I mean, yeah. how, how do you start with somebody? Well, typically I do, I spend about 90 minutes with the person initially um, with the first coaching call because that's kind of an exploratory session where I take a look uh, through a series of questions and a series of uh, different uh, tools I have. I, we look at the physical, emotional, financial, relational, and spiritual areas of a person's life and say, okay, what areas of, is, is your most priority? What, what, where is your big priority right now? And then we kind of laser focus on that. I mean, we, have, we eventually get to all five areas, but we, we start out with kind of a, looking at it from a real big picture. Then we go win and we really laser focus on that one area. Let's say the big area for a person might be finances. Oh, you know, I'm a, you know or, and then you take care of the financial, and then all of a sudden they say, well, you know, I'd like to, be, I'd like to lose a little extra pounds, I'd like to be in better shape. Um, I feel like I don't have a, maybe a spiritual connection with others or with my higher power of God or whatever you want to call it, and, and I, wanna, I want help with that. What can you, and so you, as a life coach, you kind of go one by one by one. Think of the life coach as kind of your GPS, like you, would, you have a GPS in your car. Yeah. It's an easy analogy to think about. Well, say you don't know where you're going. You might be going the wrong direction 90% of the time, but the GPS gets you back on track. Well, a life coach does the same thing. It really helps to course correct you. My, my, per, my personal philosophy is the relationship that you have with yourself is the most important relationship that you'll ever have. Because if you have a good relationship with your inner self and with yourself, then you're going to also have a good relationship. You're going to project that out into the world. That's just my personal. But, um, but if they came to me, like part of the questions that I ask in the exploratory sessions will tease out that information. So if I was going to work with you, for example, uh, in the course of our conversation of me asking you certain questions, um, it'll, it will tease out that information it, where it'll say, oh, well, I, I have issues with uh, my, my mother-in-law, or I have issues with my spouse, or I have real issues with my the work relationships, or I have issues, or maybe my self-esteem isn't where, you know, because that's a big thing that I work with people, because 80% of success is really the inner, inner game of success. The other 20% in my opinion anyway, and a lot of other successful people, is that is for the technical aspects of what you want to do, can be, it's, a, it's, a learned, it's something that's a skill that can be learned. But the biggest thing is to get that self-esteem, self-confidence up to where it needs to be. Because I think a lot of people, they have this idea that um, they get overwhelmed. They think, oh my God, I got all these things. And it's like, what, what I get them to do is just to break it down into small, bite-sized, digestible pieces that they can process, they can understand, and that they can develop action plans. Because that's where, you know, once we get all this exploratory stuff done, then we work towards putting together some action plans. Cause I'm a big fan of the action yes. plan. I'm smiling. Oh, My yeah. kids are like yeah. all the time, oh. Oh, you always have to have a plan. I'm a big, big yeah, fan of that. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, is um, you know, knowledge is power, but it's only the application of knowledge. Right that is going to bring the real power because you can have all those wonderful philosophies and ideas you know and, and, and as I have over the years kicking around in your head but if you don't take action on it, it's kind of like it's just wasted it's just wasted information and energy that you and then so it's you're crazy not to not to use that stuff 
I was working with somebody that had an issue with smoking or drinking or whatever, and they had they had you know some bad habits, they know they need to change. I, I I'll work with them on the on that. So then the physical could be could be waste loss, could be just changing some bad habits, and looking at why they keep repeating the same thing over and over. You know, you hear the old famous saying, uh, insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. Well, well, that's what a lot of people in the world do, and. The reason they do it, quite honestly, and we've all been, I don't, we, I don't like to use the word guilty, but we've all been kind of guilty of it in a sense because um, it, we do things unconsciously. It's not that we, it's just that we get into these habits. You get up in the morning, you, you get your cup of coffee, you take a shower, you have your routine, you do your certain things, and it gets comfortable, and you do that all the time. But then all of a sudden, you realize, well, maybe this, these habits aren't serving me anymore, so I need to like look at doing things a little different. And with a lot of people, they're not likely to change um, unless there's enough pain in their life. If they're facing a life-threatening illness, and like I've talked with smokers over the years, and they say, oh, you know, I knew I should have quit, but then it, finally one day I, was, I ended up intubated on a ventilator, and I, could, you know, and I went through hell and back, and now I've decided like, that was it. That was, that was their bottom line. So everybody right. has a different bottom line. Emotions can really serve you or they can really tear you apart. Yeah. And so it's, it's an emotional kind of look at where you are right now in terms of your emotions and, and you know, what emotions are serving you and what emotions aren't. And how to keep them on an even keel so you're not up and down and up and down. I see so many people, they're on these roller coaster rides. It doesn't need to be that way. And, so, and sometimes just having a coach, which I like to think of a coach as kind of like an anchor, like an anchoring point is, you know, uh, they can call you up and say, oh, I'm having these challenges. Or, and it might be, maybe they're, emotion, they're all stressed out and emotional about something, and maybe it's just they need a little organization in their life. Maybe they need, you know, time management, things like that. I mean, that's on, on, on not always the answer, but you get to know. And so a lot of it is just knowing yourself. And, you know, a lot of it, I think, too, is self-awareness. I always like to use the... Uh, philosophy Wayne Dyer has is um, I can be either be a host to God or hostage to my ego. Think about that one for a second. Yeah, that's a host good point. to a God or a hostage to my ego. That if you think if you can if you can put that in perspective and say and 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 we're always going back and forth. I'm no different than you or anybody else. We we have our moments, but if we can be um, a host to God or a higher power or whoever however you define God for yourself, and use that as your guide then I think you'll, you'll do great. But when we, when we uh, operate out of our ego, usually we don't get the kind of results that we want. To watch someone, to see where they are when they first come in, and then you work with them, say, three months, six months, nine months, a year, and then you see the growth. And to know that you were part of that is like just a gift that money can't buy. I mean, the money's nice and all that stuff, but it's the, gift, the real, real gift is in watching the growth, watching that per and then them coming back to you and saying, you know, you really made a difference in my life. Oh, and, yeah. You know, it's like, it really, you feel that at a heart level because you're like, wow, I really impacted that person. And then, um, and then you want to do more of it. Bec and the other thing is it makes you feel good. I know for me, geez, when I can do something to help somebody, and, and he heck, I've done it for years f for free. And, and, and now, you know, and then I say, well, why not go and get certified in this and actually do this and as a, you know, as a business and, and, and at the same time help people. And my focus now is more on, like, I help entrepreneurs and business owners with their business uh, areas. But I, I also really work closely with individuals that want to connect with their life purpose. Because I think, to me, that's a really important issue. I see so many people in the world today that are, go into these jobs they hate and they're miserable and they want to complain. And I, what it is, is they need to find what it is they're passionate about. And, and, and a lot of people just don't have a clue how to do that. So I have some techniques to help them do that and help them connect with that.